Good morning and good afternoon. My name is Cindy Valladares, and I would like to thank you today for giving us about an hour of your time to learn about how AAA has been, um, has been able to meet their PCI DSS requirements and getting some roadside assistance from Tripwire. Uh, before I introduce our speakers today, um, our speaker today, I would like to go over some housekeeping items. Uh, I always get the question about uh, will we be able to get the presentation slides? Yes, you will be getting a presentation slides and a link to where you can download them. Uh, in addition to that, um, I don't know if you're aware, but you can get CPE credits for this webcast today. So you will receive also an email with some information on that. If you have questions during the slide, please uh, type it in, and we will do our best to address as many questions as we can at the end of the presentation. And uh, last but not least, um, we want you to be really engaged, so if you you can take a moment at the end of the presentation to rate our presentation. It's really valuable for us to see how we're doing and whether we're addressing your comments um, and interactions. Okay, so uh, for today, we have the honor and privilege of having one of our customers, Tim Macy, Director of Information Security at AAA. Uh, Tim, why don't you say hello, and then I'll do a, a longer intro for you. Hello, everyone. This is Tim Macy, uh, Director of Information Security. Thank you, Tim. Um, we we're truly honored that you've taken the time to be with us today. Um, Tim has been the Head of Information Security at the Auto Club gru uh, Group located in uh, Michigan for the past three years. Uh, but he is, um, as he likes to say, an oldie in information security. He's done that for at least uh, 12 years and uh, 25 years in IT in a variety of industries, including banking, insurance, healthcare, and manufacturing. And uh, Tim will talk to us uh, in a few minutes about what does he do for AAA and also what is his current role and uh, some of the requirements from compliance and security perspective. And for those of you who turned out a little bit later and missed my introduction, my name is Cindy Valladares. Um, I've been uh, working with Tripwire for quite a number of years, and PCI is very dear to my heart. And I'm also an author at the State of Security blog, and the link is there. If you happen to be um, a social, uh, a digitally social person, uh, please also join us on Twitter with the hashtag PCI Webcast, and I'll do my best to multitask and address your questions in here as well as um, on Twitter. So with that being said and uh, welcoming all of you, Tim, um, why don't you start talking about who you are, what do you do at AAA, and uh, giving us a little bit of uh, insight into your journey. Yeah, thank you, Cindy. Um, well, first of all, I started with AAA in 2007 as an information security consultant. Um, in 2010, I was promoted to the director. Um, and I've been in infrastructure and security for over 20 years, and obviously uh, I definitely am an older uh, guy. But, but I started using Tripwire as open source in, in 2010, or sorry, in 2012, I should say, uh, in 2002, excuse me. Uh, AAA had, um, uh, when I came to AAA in 2007, they had an Enterprise 5 uh, version installed, and they had a, a real handful of agents out there. There were uh, just, just about five to ten agents. And that's really where our story and our journey begins, and I hope you like the motorcycle because I ride motorcycles too. So. Um, next to, uh, to talk about is that um, who are we? Well, in terms of AAA, probably most of you have heard of AAA. Um, uh, again, uh, AAA is, is known for, it's 100 years old, we're known for our roadside assistance. So, And this winter, you probably, uh, for those of you that are in the northern states, you definitely needed us because we, we had a lot of calls this winter, probably one of the record-setting winters for calls for assistance. We also serve in terms of travel services to get away from really bad winters uh, like this one. Um, and then we, we also have uh, insurance services for auto, home, and boat, and, and motorcycle, um, which is always good for those of us that, that ride bikes. 
Triple uh, A. We also offer Triple A banking and financial services, along with uh, with our entire business line and and member services, which is uh, essentially, as you can see on the right hand side, it's a show your card and save. So if you're like going to hotels or restaurants, uh, you can save a certain percentage off of of, off of the tab, which is great. Um, we're in 11 states uh, and Puerto Rico. Uh, we have 9 million approximately members and 8,000 employees, and we have approximately 500 servers and, and growing, as everybody's aware of uh, server growth and server sprawl throughout the organizations. Um, our tripwire journey, where did, it, where did it begin? Well, first of all, as I mentioned, it started small. and. In, in the smallness of it, it was a small implementation uh, when I got here, but really AAA, and, and we had some real big compliance issues uh, in 2007. We had multiple compliance pressures, things like um, we, we're, we're privately held insurance, so we have a thing uh, called a SOX Lite AFRM. Uh, we have uh, PCI compliance. We had uh, HIPAA, some HIPAA compliance, and now with being a bank, we also have SFIC, Federal Reserve, OCC type compliance issues as well. So we had multiple compliance uh, uh, pressures on us. Really, um, and I, as I mentioned, we had about 10 agents when, when we came on board. There were no administrators. No one was really watching the real changes that were going on in the environment, and that's really key. Um, there was really no visibility for the changes and for uh, the work that was taking place in, in 2007, and, and, uh, and so that was a real big issue for us. No one was really watching those changes. Uh, we had change management, um, and we have a good change management program uh, across the board, but we really lacked um, some communication, coordination, and validation of those changes taking place. So that was something that we, we really wanted to see what was changing and understand that from a security and compliance perspective. And so that's really, um, when I got here, that's really what, what existed. And what we did was that we evaluated this and said, hey, we need to make a turn. We need to, we need to basically take our journey a different direction. Thank you, Tim. Um, I would like to ask um, now the audience uh, a couple of questions here. You know, Tim talked about having multiple compliance issues, and PCI is just one of them. So if you could take a moment and vote on the questions here, we would be interested to see how many regulations do you have to comply with. Uh, a is just one. Are you the lucky person who only needs to comply with one compliance requirement? Uh, B, two to four, your life is a little bit hectic. Or um, C, five, uh, do you, your auditor is your BFF. Um, Tim, how many do you guys have? You said um, at least three, correct? Really, it's four. Um, there's, there's HIPAA, there's FFIC, there's what we call, I'll call it SOX light, um, and then there's PCI. So contractual and regulatory compliance. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good point. So let's see if we can um, start taking a look. Oh, it seems that there are not a lot of people who are in the lucky A group. But uh, let me stop the audience vote here, um, and we can get a good sense of um, – we had 99 people voting, and we have 15% of the people who said they only have one regulation to comply with. And I'm guessing that would be PCI, otherwise you wouldn't be here. 52% um, over half of the people, two to four, and 33%, five or more. Do you think that is probably a good indication of uh, InfoSec professionals, um, Tim? Yeah, I think PCI is a, a huge driver for, for, for a lot of information security because uh, it touches on so many fronts, you know, whether you're a um, retailer, you know, a retail front like we have, um, or whether or not you're, you're back-end processing the credit cards. Um, you've got some type of online presence typically that's going to take some kind of credit card payment. So it touches so many aspects of, of information security industry. So it's a big compliance driver for everyone. Good. So I'll let you carry on until the rest of the presentation, Tim, and may pop in here later on with a couple of comments. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Um, the, there's always a, the issue of does compliance, you know, drive security, and, and obviously, really, it doesn't. You know, um, good security should always meet compliance and regulatory or contractual compliance. 
that's that's the thing that I wanted to say. And but you have to move. Obviously, looking at compliance, you have to look at some of the things that you're required to complete. Um, but good security should always have those things completed. And when we looked at our environment, we said, here's a lot of unplanned work that's not being identified. Here's as we so as we rolled out agents. And we continue to see the unplanned work, we started to have that visibility of all the unplanned work that was going on that we didn't even know about and all the changes that were happening with our environment that we were not aware of. So tracking changes really meant that we started to identify what those changes were, we started to report, and then obviously those drove some security incidents as we started to see the changes in the environment. Um, when, we, when we also started looking at our environment, we found uh, continuous monitoring meant uh, that we've got more visibility, but it also meant that we are taking some preventative measures uh, instead of being reactive. We, we react, you know, typically from an information security perspective, the, the further you can get to a preventative mode and less from a reactive mode, the better you're going to be. Um, and obviously, um, from a PCI compliance perspective, our acquiring bank was asking us, hey, you know, are you going to be PCI compliant. When are you going to be compliant? When, when are you going to get there? So we had some pressure from our acquiring bank, and they were getting a little restless in terms of our ability to, to, to deliver on PCI compliance. So what did we do? Um, the, the first thing that we did was that we had some existing products um, that were in-house uh, when I started, and we evaluated the existing products, and we looked at, okay, how could they handle configuration changes? Were they alerting? Were they reporting enough? Well, honestly, the products were falling down because, number one, there were multiple products. Number two, um, there just wasn't that cohesiveness with the products and the stability of the products to be able to perform, and, and it created a, a real problem for us uh, along the way. Um, the next thing that we did was that we said, okay, is there better entrenched products here? Is there is there better products out there? And we said, we've got a product already in-house. And I looked at Tripwire and I said, Here's some additional, uh, an additional product that we have that no one's really taking advantage of. Let's do some simple change management and reporting to really to, to look at the, the, the systems that we had monitored, the five or ten systems, and let's compare it up to the existing products. So we were able to do that, and what we found was that Tripwire was the product that, that actually better suited our needs. Uh, and just from this standpoint is that the agents that we were running on the previous products uh, were creating problems. They were actually, what they were meant to do um, in terms of just configuration management and monitoring, they were actually creating systematic problems throughout our environment. So we, we needed to get a stable, a stable agent out there. My past experience with Tripwire on the open source, I could see that the Tripwire agent was a stable agent. It had proven that over in, in the open source uh, territory. So when I saw this as, as an enterprise agent, I, I, I could see that the agent itself was stable. I went to the administrators and the, and the infrastructure folks and I said, let's try this product. Let's see if this agent is stable in our environment. And, uh, you know, and it was really a stable product and a stable agent for us. So that was a part of the evaluation piece. The other part of the evaluation piece was really to, to demonstrate um, and choose uh, the right solution. Uh, and that, what I meant by that is this, is that it's got to be a solution that fit the entire organization. So what, one of the things that, to do that is to produce reports and produce reports that are meaningful to management. So we demonstrated that the reports that were coming out of Tripwire made sense. They were demonstrating the changes that were going on on the systems, and they were, they were easy to do. They were easy to create and easy to produce, especially when we, when we started reviewing those reports with our audit management team. They, they started seeing the, the benefits of, of the product as opposed to the previous products that were there. Now, obviously, when, you, when you're going against an existing and entrenched product, sometimes management is resistant to, to the to replacement of that product simply because uh, there's, a, there's a cost that's associated with that. There was a cost of bringing in those other products. Um, and it's always a resistance from the standpoint of does the other product work or is, was it working in another environment? So, so we had some resistance due, due to that commitment to the other products. But we began to really – if I sure, may absolutely. ask you a question, you know, one of the things that um, often comes in conversations here is um, how do you get your management support, um, especially when when technically a product is superior, but then you can't make that connection to management. So maybe it is more of the, the soft skills. I think it would be interesting for the audience to hear from you as to how you got that management um to, to commit to a product that you felt was the right one for your team? 
Oh, absolutely. I think the, the first thing is, is socialization. Socialization with the, the infrastructure and the support teams because um, they're the ones who bu bubble up on their management side to say, is this a pro stable product or not? So that first aspect was demonstrating to the infrastructure and support teams that, hey, this is a, this is a better agent, this is a more stable agent. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, is producing reports that are comparison reports to say, look at this report and identify for me the changes that took place and, and does it make sense to you? And look at this report and let's identify the changes. And which is the easier report to determine? And the third thing is that you've got to identify the benefits. What's the end result? Are we going to have compliance or are we going to be unsure? Can we take this report and present it to external auditors and does it make sense to them? Or can we take a tripwire report, present it to an external auditor and does it make sense to them? So those are the three things that I would say. Great, thank you. I'll, I'll let you proceed. <laughs> Oh, sure, no problem. Um, the, um, the next thing for us is that, as I indicated, is that for us, we, we had also begun stealthily. And I, and I say that from this aspect is that you know, we weren't working behind management's back, but at the same time, I was socializing. We are presenting this to the infrastructure support team so that they could get a feel for it and determine whether or not this was the right product for, for, for their systems because the previous products were creating problems. So that was a big selling point. Um, you know, we also engaged our tripwire uh, security professional, and, and part of the things that, that took place there was that we developed a relationship, and, and uh, through that, uh, uh, he would actually stop on site and, and come in and show us some additional features and say, hey, have you seen this? Have you looked at this particular feature set? Um, and this is really an exciting feature set. When dashboards became available, um, you know, we started creating some dashboards together, and that was really helpful for, for management to see uh, the value, again, the visibility there with the dashboards um, began to really impress the management uh, side of things and understand why this product was, was valuable. Um, and really, the, the next thing is that, you know, when we were working with that security professional, um, you know, he understood, he began to grow in his experience and knowledge of, of why it was difficult for us to roll out any products in our organization and why it was difficult to transition from other products. And he began to help us in terms of, okay, here's, here's some additional selling points that probably we haven't talked about or thought about from the standpoint of presenting Tripwire as the product and the right solution. So, um, and, and over time, you know, we were able to basically identify that Tripwire was the right solution for us as an organization. So, um, kind of fast forwarding on our journey together, what, what took place is this, is that um, we were able to sell uh, to management that Tripwire was the right product. We were able to decommission the other products over time and then replace those products with a plan, a project plan to be able to identify all the critical systems and place Tripwire agents on those critical systems and begin to move forward. And it took time. And the biggest thing I can tell you is that it takes patience and it takes understanding that this is a journey, that it's not something that's completed within six months. It takes, it takes sometimes years. Um, for us today, as we move forward, uh, we've got some dedicated staff that are associated with Tripwire management, with Tripwire uh, administration, um, and we have a set of infrastructure folks that understand how the agents work, and they're really pleased with the agents. As a matter of fact, I have infrastructure uh, folks that come up to me and say, hey, I have no problems with, with, with Tripwire. It's a great product. We, we've had no issues for, for many years now. So, and that's a, that's, a good, that's a good thing to hear uh, from your infrastructure so folks. Tim, um, I was recently reading a report by the analyst firm 451 that talked about how to prevent um, the investments that you've made in technology products to become shelfware. It seems that you've, you've done a really good job of um, utilizing and leveraging the investments that you have for a variety of, of things. Uh, could you could you talk to us about how you've you've managed to do that? You talk about being a long journey and be, being patient, but did you have a strategy? Let's say work on early wins, show successes, um, uh, so that you can have the momentum to keep on going. Oh, absolutely. One of the first um, one of the first tactics was that we knew that we needed to present to our internal auditors and our external auditors for our, our SOX light compliance piece. And that was a limited number of systems. It wasn't, the scope wasn't as big as maybe a PCI, but that was a, a, a compliance requirement that early on we met, and that was an early win for us. We were able to demonstrate to, to the auditing team and to our external auditors the changes that were taking place 
on, on our uh, insurance-based systems, and, and that was a huge win because previously there were changes that were identified, but there was no validation. Again, there was no visibility that those changes had occurred, and that was a huge win. We also were able to provide our internal auditing staff the ability and the visibility to see pull reports, and they were really excited about that. So that was a, that was a quick and early win for us. And some of, some of the other things that we, we've done as far as correlating the changes, and, and what I mean by that is this, is that um, we want to be able to, and today what we're doing is we're just starting to bring the tripwire vents into, into all of not only our change, identifying our change management, but today we're doing it on a manual basis so that we can correlate a single change event um, with an identifier and code that into all of our tripwire changes so that we can pull up reports. And this holds true even for unplanned changes so that as we detect unplanned changes, we'll go back to the source and identify what was this change, you know, related to. Was it related to something that happened because there was a, an immediate fix that needed to be provided? Um, and then we will document that inside the system. And the system, again, when we pr pull out a report, we have a, a schedule report for unplanned changes and planned changes that we present not only not only do we review but also our internal auditing staff as well and, and they really like it. The, uh, the next thing that we've done um, uh, recently is really uh, pull together our policy driven dashboards and that means now from a PCI compliance perspective I can see systems that have and are PCI compliant based on the reporting and based on the, the schedule requirements and the policies that are provided by Tripwire to correlate against the, the changes that are in the database. And that's exciting because we can see and actually drill down into, okay, this specific requirement wasn't being met by that system. Why was it? Um, it could be that the system um, you know, doesn't require this particular requirement, meaning that it's something that was either misconfigured or, or it was something that was configured properly, but we have this in a secured zone and it doesn't need to be a part of the requirements and we can notate that. Um, it's excellent to be able to drill down immediately from, from the dashboards, um, and that's, that's and something else. You know, the other, the other point that I want to make here is that, you know, every organization has policies, right? But not all of us are very keen into enforcing those policies and making sure that, um, you know, the, they're, they're being followed. So, you know, your perspective on that would be also useful, these policy-driven dashboards where they – also a way to not only have the policies written, but making sure that you're enforcing those? Yes, absolutely. And part of what we do is that we reach out. Um, you know, if there's a change or there's a you – know, we look at the dashboards every day. And so if we see a change, one of the things that we immediately do is, is a drill into it. Where did this change occur? What is the schedule change? And then what was the change related to? And we'll reach back to the change management owner um, and identify what that was and, and document that. And then, we, obviously, we can determine whether or not it's affected our compliance or whether or not it has not affected our compliance. But more importantly, it's whether or not it's affected our security, and that's, that's the most important piece. And I, I'm going to ask a question from the audience here because it's just relevant to what you were just talking. But um, they're wondering if you are using, in conjunction to the Tripwire implementation, a GRC tool like Archer uh, to feed the data from Tripwire to that, you know, um, GRC platform. And if you have done so, if you can talk about your successes in establishing that. Now, we haven't, we're starting to look at um, a, a dedicated GRC tool to kind of do a homegrown um, uh, pull together of, of, our, uh, uh, of our risk and compliance issues. So it's, it's really, right now, I would, the answer is no, we don't have it, but we are looking in the future to be able to do that, something that's on our radar uh, right now. I don't want to hear whether it's an Excel spreadsheet, <laughs> which is the de facto risk management <laughs> platform for a lot of people. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, yes. <laughs> The other thing now, that you, uh, sure. Go ahead. I, ha I have a couple of other questions, but um, do your points, and then I think it will be practical to answer, ask them at that point. Sure. Uh, just kind of wrapping, wrapping up around some of the things that we're doing that, that, that really uh, get me excited as far as uh, rules and tasks. Uh, we, we've, we've, uh, we started with probably no, uh, maybe one or two rules, and, and I don't even think those were well-defined. Um, and, and we have hundreds of rules now and, and, and several tasks and, and scheduled tasks, over 500 servers. And that includes our, our ESX environments, our, our VMware uh, virtual host. And that's exciting because 
when you apply rules to systems and you're, now you're looking for specific changes on directories, on folders, um, you know, on events that occur, and, and as you're pulling that, uh, you're, you're being able to see a, lot, a real rich um, change environment here, and you can see the fluidity of the environment in, in a really in-depth way. And so that's really something that, that, again, we did not have before, and it's exciting to see. Some of the other things that we're working on, we're working on uh, real-time monitoring as well for all of our critical systems, and that's something that we're real excited about as well. So there are um, a couple of questions related to the type of infrastructure that you have. Um, are you using mainly Linux systems or, or Windows? Uh, what kind of systems do you have? Sure, it's a combination of Linux and Windows, um, about 50%, maybe a little more Linux than Windows. Okay, and then a um, couple of other questions about how are you leveraging the trip with, uh, uh, triport data if you're utilizing that into your SIM or um, or you're using cybercrime products or other security products for uh, for your security needs? Yes, uh, a good question on, on, on the SIM. What we're doing is that we are in the process right now of, of, of populating the, the tripwire events into our SIM so that we can correlate events that are associated with uh, other other events that the sim is processing. So um, it's it's right now it's still under work. Um, you know we've got so we've started getting the events and started to correlate. Uh, we've still got to write some rules associated with that, and that's really more sim work because um, the events as they come in, uh, there's some formatting and some sim work that we have to do in terms of actually the, the engines uh, to be able to, to properly format that and correlate that back to uh, the assets that are that are defined in the sim. Okay. And uh, for the attendees, I'll address the other questions as we move on. But uh, why don't we talk about how did AAA benefit from uh, the solution? Yeah, and, and the first thing I want to say is that patience is, is definitely a virtue in, in this particular instance. Um, you know, because it, it takes time. It doesn't happen. Things don't happen overnight. Um, but the number one thing, and you've heard me say this um, quite a bit over the last uh, 20 minutes here, is that visibility. The visibility in the configuration events uh, just not being seen before. I can't tell you how how much better I sleep at night when I can see things as opposed to things that I can't see. Um, you know, obviously there's improved security monitoring. You know, uh, you know, really when you look at finding out who did what and you know, when they did it and why, um, that, those are those are things that those core blocking and tackling in terms of security. Um, and I think sometimes we we tend to leave those behind, but this is really core blocking and tackling that we need to uh, security professionals need to recognize. It's got to be done. You know, in our in our environment. Um, the next thing that we benefited was obviously PCI compliance. Uh, we were a level two merchant. Um, we were able to achieve PCI compliance, and that was uh, predominantly through the, the file integrity uh, type monitoring that we provide, that Tripwire provides for us. Um, you know, we were able to achieve that. That's, that's uh, one single requirement, but Tripwire also benefits in terms of security monitoring and events, uh, event correlation, all those things that are related to, to the PCI requirements. Um, you know, and for us, that was uh, so that we didn't we didn't uh, lapse into any kind of additional fees. Um, you know, we were uh, obviously we were excited about the fact that that uh, we're looking at um, you know possibly sometime in the future, in the near future, becoming a level one merchant as well. So that's that's real critical for us. Um, benefits to the uh, finance and cash management. Uh, what we do there is that um, you know we produce uh, reports that are that are, that are, that are critical for our, our financial services to review, and we review those. Um, you know, in compliance with uh, FFIC uh, type uh, regulations, um, and that's really that's really uh, really important for us uh, because we look at those systems as critical uh, to our banking services and our financial services, um, and so we we monitor those uh, real heavily. Um, again, I mentioned that, that we have a SOX light compliance component, and that was really the first that we met. Um, again, I mentioned FFIC, and the final thing for us is really. Um, keeping auditors happy, you know, it's really, that's a hard job, um, keeping auditors happy because uh, as they come in, they're always looking to find um, events, they're looking to find, you know, signature things that are changed or, or they're looking for all the things that, that, that possibly you don't, aren't aware of. And so providing them access to Tripwire, validation of changes, validation of what uh, it is that they can pull out of a system and now see exactly what's taking place. Uh, it's really kept the auditors uh, a lot happier than, than what they've been. Uh, so we really, uh, we really appreciate it from that perspective as well. 
And then um and you're and then talking also, here about um you're talking here about providing that level of confidence and trust in uh, the systems and your team. And uh, I also wanted to for you to elaborate a little bit more in how you've collaborated with uh, the finance and cash management and perhaps other business departments because I think that collaboration between um, the business side and IT is key as we move forward, um, you know, in our professions. Yeah, I think that the main thing for, for, for the collaboration there is, is identification of what's critical to them, you know, is, is identifying, you know, is this a critical system, for example, if you have a uh, – uh, cash management system that, that interacts with the, the, the Federal Reserve, for example. Uh, that's a system that's critical, that, that has to, if there's any kind of touching of that system, if there's any kind of change in that system, uh, we're required not only to monitor that, but we're required to work with, you know, our end users, our customers, our cash management folks to say, okay, here's something that, that we saw, you know, let's talk about what, what took place, um, was there was there a, an event that, that happened, or was there changes that's coming down the road? And, and we work with them when they've got changes to their systems or changes to their applications. We work with them to understand what those are going to be, so that we can help them in terms of monitoring, so that we don't fall down, you know, let and let uh, let them down from that perspective. So it's really critical to, to to understand what their needs are and their criticality of their systems, of their applications, so that we can architect and, and tailor our systems to be able to meet those monitoring needs. Yeah, I was talking not too long ago with the CISO of the city of Portland here, and uh, he was telling me that every time he asks for something, he gives something in return. Uh, so if you're asking people to, you know, enter your passports every 60, 90 days, we'll explain how that can be helpful from a security perspective. Um, so you're, you're giving them also the visibility as to why you're asking those changes and it's for their benefit as well. Absolutely. And there's the trust factor that, that's really critical. Um, so I'll let you uh, talk about the last point because there are three or four questions of people that want you to elaborate on ESX versus easy change monitoring and, and what kind of um, uh, system change management are you doing on those and whether you're running agents? There's a lot of questions uh, around that specific bullet point. Sure. We, we run agents on all of the ESX servers that, that, we, that we've installed. And so what that provides us is visibility into the changes in, into the actual uh, VMware um, you know, switch environment, VMware configuration environment, so that we see all the changes. And then here's the here's the the really good point is that before we had no idea when a virtual server was being stood up, we had no idea it was being spun up, and it's so easy to spin up a virtual server. So for for us, what we've been able to do is identify when a virtual server has been stood up, what kind of server is it, what's what's the operating system, what's what's how is it built, or the configuration of it, what what VLAN you know it might be attached to in terms of of, of the system itself, what, what's the virtual switch configuration associated with that. So we've been able to see all the virtual uh, environment changes and configuration changes especially as they take place. And that's been a huge win for us because before we didn't have any visibility in the VMware space at all. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, I believe so. And then we'll, we'll see if some of those questions uh, come back uh, again uh, to us. Okay. And so finally, you know, one of the last pieces here, I, I show the road that's winding down. Um, you know, it's, it's actually kind of going downhill. I don't know if you noticed that. But uh, there's always, though, in any journey, there's always, you know, hurdles. There's always, you know, bumps, bumpy spots. So we're still, we're still a work in progress. We're still a journey in progress. Um, but it's really important, obviously, for us to understand where we've been, to know where we're going. One of the things that we know we want to get to is automation and that change management so that we've got a couple of change management platforms, and we want to get to the point where it's an automated feed right from the change management, it's right to Tripwire, so that that's, that trip, uh, that change management ticket, if you will, is completely um, integrated in the Tripwire and documented in, into the change so that we've identified kind of soup to nuts. Here's the change that was told that we were going to make, and here's the validation of that change, and here's the ID that identifies all of that, ties it all back together. Uh, we're, we're excited about getting can, can to that you, point. Hmm? Can you talk about what kind of changes on your systems were mo most significant in terms of security uh, perspective? You know, was it the content changes, the permissions, uh, you know, uh, elevated privileges, or uh, what have you found the most impactful changes? 
the most impactful changes are typically coding or application development, uh, you know, changes in promotion to code um, and configuration, standard configuration changes like, you know, if you're going to change like a, a host entry, if you're going to change a password file, if it, you know, those are the kind of system administration type changes. But it's that code changes that, that we really, we really wanted to see because code changes make a, an impact to all of our systems. Okay. And the next thing that, that, that we were looking for was that um, we're looking to expand out more of our real-time monitoring. This is something that's still a work in progress as we begin to get those alerts on a real-time basis. Um, you know, Tripwire does more scheduled basis right now for us, but we're expanding out our real-time monitoring so that the alerts come to our phones, get, we get more real-time pages, because obviously, as you know, you know the, the time frame from determining whether or not there was a change or a potential attack even, you know, that time frame is really small, so you need to be alerted right away and to be able to identify is it a false positive, is it not, what kind of change was it, um, is it an attack? Uh, and so that's really critical for us. Uh, capturing and correlating, I mentioned before in one of the questions is that, um, A, we're expanding those events in, in our SIM. Uh, that's really critical for us as well, the correlation of events. And, and uh, obviously you want to see what's going on in your entire environment and not just one specific piece. Um, the other thing for us is that uh, we, we are improving our security standards with exact measurements. And what I mean by that is this, is that uh, you can take a SIS standard for, for Windows, let's say, and you can download a policy from Tripwire and exclude maybe some of the things that apply to your environment, some of the things that don't apply to your environment, and then you can start measuring. Are your systems following that standard? Uh, that's, a, that's an international standard that's been obviously presented. But we also have our own internal standards that we build as well, and so we're measuring against those as well, and that's something that we're improving on um, and really, really starting to get some traction on that and provide those uh, exact measurements of all of our security standards across the board. Um, so uh, a particular question regarding that point um, uh, from someone in the audience here. Uh, how were you able to align your company's policies with the policies that are provided with, within the Tripwire products? Did you have to go through a detailed compare process, or did you use the default out-of-the-box policies and then just modify it as, as it worked? How, how did you manage to map that requirement and other requirements? That's a good question. And so what we did was we actually have done two uh, different methods. The first time that we went through, uh, we decided to do kind of a wholesale replacement. Just take the policy and I'll call it um, triple AIs it. And we, we, then we just pulled out um, sections in the policy that, that didn't apply to our standards. The second, the second way, and this is where it gets into more of the exact management, our second approach has been this. That was a little more cumbersome and a lot, it took a lot longer. Our second approach is going to be to accept the policies accept, in, and then from the standpoint of internally publish an exception list that says that we do not need to follow the following requirements in this specific standard um, and then just exclude those out and that's a lot easier approach and that's the approach that we've been going with over the last um, probably over the last six months and that's really been uh, a lot of time saver for us and it's started to really produce results in terms of our measurements as well. Great to hear. Um, and a couple more things is that uh, we've, we've started to extend the dashboards and report some more folks in the, in the organization, and that's, that's been um, really beneficial. For example, um, uh, infrastructure team prior to this was really not that interested in what changes that were there, and, and it wasn't, wasn't just they didn't have time to look at it. They didn't have a co cohesive uh, reporting system. They didn't have a dashboard to look at their systems. Now they're in there, they're looking at their systems, they build their systems, and they immediately look, go to Tripwire and say, hey, does our system meet the standards, and that's a that's a really um, really good thing for us, and it's 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 starting to really take traction here um, in our journey because if you can get the infrastructure folks to start looking at your tripwire system for any system management, system configuration settings, uh, security settings, if you can start getting them to really look at that and honing in their systems as they build them, that's what that's what we're uh, we're excited about because it it it, le it it makes it our job a lot easier, and, and they take over some of the security responsibilities as well. Um, and then obviously, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna let you continue on this one because there's like three four questions regarding dashboards. So let me okay. ask you them one at a time. But um, can you elaborate on the dashboards and the implementation process? So you said some people don't had didn't have anything. Uh, what was the process like for for you guys to develop a, a dashboard that they can consume? Can you walk us through that? 
Sure. The, um, the, the main thing is to identify and group your systems and, and be sure to tag those assets and, and group them. That's tagging and grouping is, 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 a, is a critical foundation. That has to be done. Um, and then once that's completed, um, you need to identify then what you're going to report on specifically. Is it a, for example, a PCI dashboard? Is it going to be a GLBA dashboard? Um, you know, is it, you know, with the type of dashboard information that you want to, to basically go out and measure? The dashboards are presenting to you then the measurements of all of the changes that have taken place based on the requirements that are located in the policy. So, and that's, and so that's really our setup. And so when we, when we look at our dashboards, they're broken down by compliance, they're broken down by what we want to see, security standards, and then there's obviously the most important point that I can make here is that it's the groupings and the, the criticality of the in asset tagging is, is important for that. Okay. And um, do, you, do you have different dashboards based on your audience? So, for example, for your auditors, different um, dashboard for your managers, different um, uh, dashboards, and is that part of the tagging and, and grouping functionality as well? Yes, it is, and it's 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 important because I don't want to see I don't have the auditors having a view for everything. It's, it's number one, it's too much information. And number number two, if if the auditors have all of this information, it can generate more questions um, and actually a lot of follow up. So uh, we're providing them with the systems that are critical for their audit. So we've tagged their their the assets according to what, um, like for example, for our SOX light compliance, we've tagged those assets according to that. So they see that group and that group only you know, for a specific audit. And they've, they've targeted some other specific audit and critical systems for us, and we tag those and present those back to them. Okay. And um, one uh, question related to this as well. Um, we have some interest on people that would like you to elaborate on the importance of working with senior managers in trying to embrace security throughout the entire organization. You know, sometimes it's an uh, uphill battle. Sometimes it's tone from the top and it's easier, but um, if, if you've had to go from the bottom up, you know, can you share your experiences in working with senior management? Sure, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, a, it's always a journey. Again, it's a journey with, 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 uh, with everything you do in terms of security, and the, the most important thing is to start small and identify your criticality, your critical systems, and why they're important to the organization, and then put that into language that uh, senior management can understand. It's, it's important for, for them to say, if I talk about, you know, um, some obscure vulnerability that's occurring on a system, uh, that doesn't mean anything to a senior management person. But if you talk about, here's our application, and here's what it's providing, our, you know, to our business, and here, by the way, is some things that we're not doing in terms of securing these applications, that language speak and that business language speak is most important. Um, when you talk about things like change management or, change or configuration management or secure configuration management, those have to be put into terms that management understands, and that's, that's the language of business and not the language of security and technology. Really, really good point. Okay, so let me talk to, um, a, a little bit about how Tripwire can help um, on that. And, uh, you know, at Tripwire we address 11 of the 12 PCI DSS requirements, all except the restricting physical access to cardholder data because we're a software solution. Um, as you might know us from uh, the file integrity monitoring component with Tripwire Enterprise, we do also have other capabilities to help you in your journey to achieve a more risk-based security um, you know, implementation in your organization. Last year, we acquired Encircle, uh, a leader in the vulnerability management space, so we're happy to report that we have uh, vulnerability management as a foundational security controls. We also have log intelligence uh, with the Tripwire Log Center solution. And uh, while you were talking earlier, Tim, about the uh, correlation between the logs and the events and the changes of interest, that's something that we can, um, we have definitely done that for a lot of our, our customers, uh, reducing that gap from when a breach happens to when you can actually react and do something about it. Actually, not too long ago, Krabs and Security 
Brian Krebs in his blog wrote um, an article about Sally Beauty and how Tripwire Solutions were able to identify um, a suspicious change and prevented further damages to their systems. The article was also picked up by New York Times, so we were happy to see that our customers are um, fully utilizing the solution from a security perspective as well. Um, security configuration management, we've talked a lot about that and also the reporting and analytics portions, both from an operational perspective as well as to help you with that, th those dashboards for senior managers. Um, before I address the other questions, I just wanted to bring to your attention that we have a lot of really good resources for you to take advantage of. We've built an infographic that highlights the main differences between PCI DSS uh, 3.0 and the previous version. So it's very easy read and the link is on the slide and you will get access to the slide so you don't have to take notes and read this minuscule uh, print in here. Um, the PCI DSS itself is uh, available from the council's website and we've provided a link. Uh, this, is, uh, this is the third webcast, part of a series of two other ones. If you're interested in getting to, um, uh, to listen to the other webcasts in the series, you can access that. And um, before I start getting the other questions, I wanted to remind you if you could take two seconds and rate your satisfaction with the webcast today. I would really appreciate it. I know that there's some people who've already rated, so thank you so much. Okay, let's see. Um, are you, one of the questions, Tim, is are you using any specific rule sets like PCI or cybercrime, and how is that panning out as opposed to other security products? Uh, yes, yes we are. Um, predominantly PCI, um, and that's the, the, the core, one of the core rule sets that, that we use um, for systems that we've marked as uh, processing, transmitting, storing, obviously, um, credit card information. Um, and it's, it's worked out real well. Uh, we've, we've had good success with it. Makes a good okay. sense. Um, another question that I have in here is um, if you could cover a little bit your um, associated tripwire infrastructure that was required for the implementation and management, um, as well as what you current what you had and what you um, have covered under the tripwire, you know, server storage, network fire, uh, network firewalls, etc. Sure. Um, when, I think the, part of the question was that when we started, so when we started, uh, we were monitoring a few, uh, two, like two or three window systems and, and so forth. So obviously now we, we monitor all of our uh, critical uh, Windows and Linux-based uh, systems um, and all of our ESX hosts, uh, every, every ESX host. Um, we're currently not utilizing uh, any network device um, type agents uh, at this point in time. Okay, and um, there's also a question about with plan changes, are you using um, reference system for automated change approvals um, as, in using, uh, as in using for Windows-based WS uh, US for monthly patch approvals? Yeah, we, we have a change management system that we have a couple of change management systems that we use for, auto, for, for approvals and automatic um, approval-based processing so that um, as, the, as they're walking through the system, the, the um, change owner will actually go through and specify what changes that they're making. So they may take full utilization of a, for example, a Microsoft, uh, um, you know, um, SCCM environment to push out those changes, but they will identify those changes first in our change management system. They'll utilize SCCM to actually do the fulfillment um, and recommend and, and push out of the changes. SSCM does have the capability of reviewing changes um, and looking at whether or not they were successful or not. We, do, we don't have in place right now a correlation between SSCM and Tripwire. Um, our, our goal is to look at correlation between and change management integration and automation between the change management system, which is where you've told us what you're going to do, and Tripwire as a validation piece on the back end side. 
hopefully hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, great, thank you. Um, there is a question here about um, you know the coverage regarding uh, tripwire solutions and what kind of systems does it cover. Uh, in, instead of going through a long list of what we cover, let me give you uh, mine and Tim's emails in case you have any other questions, we can follow up with your specific requirements on that. Um, we do at Tripwire have the, the deepest and broadest coverage in the industry, so that is another one of our competitive differentiators. Um, then a question or I guess a suggestion here, which I don't know what I don't think about that sooner, but whether all of the resources will, uh, related to PCI would be put on a single location. And yes, that's a great idea uh, for a blog post that I will uh, promise to write in the coming weeks. So um, if you can go to tripwire.com slash blog, um, it, it will be in there in uh, the upcoming weeks. Okay, let's see, we have a couple of other questions here. Um, Tim, have you done any automation together with other tools um, thinking about API functionality with Tripwire Enterprise? Um, no, it's, 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 we're, we're right now we're in the planning stages of, of doing that with um, a couple of our change management systems to, to utilize uh, an API to read the database of changes and, and, and pull those in. Um, but right now we're in the planning stages. Okay. Okay, great. Is there anything that I didn't ask you that you um, thought would be good to share with the audience, especially given the level of questions and engagement, which I'm very pleased about how, uh, how many questions we got? I, I would say this is that, you know, this may seem like just, pure basics, but again, basic blocking and tackling is something that we as security professionals just, just really have to pay attention to. Um, and, and for us, it's, it's really, it's, it's still a work in progress, it's still a journey, as it always will be for, for, for organizations, um, any organization. So I just encourage you to do the basic blocking and tackling stuff. That, that's a really good point and suggestion. One, um, one thing that we are um, very proud of here at Tripwire is our association as a founding member to the Council on Cybersecurity. If you're not familiar with the Council, it's the new home of the SANS 20 uh, critical security controls. Um, you know, it, it, is, it is a guidance, it's a, it's a suggestion of how you know, information security professionals can tackle the most important uh, security functions, and they've ranked them all the way from 1 to 20 to the most important things that you can do. And a lot of them are, are basic, but they are critical um, security controls that not everyone's doing. And so I will add that resource to the blog post that I am going to be creating. And let's see, a couple, while we were chatting, a couple of other questions came through, so I'll answer those and then we'll, um, we'll call it good. Let's see, how long did it take you to re remediate all of the PCI security standards from the start? Um, it was about uh, 18 months uh, worth, of, and that was very heavily intensive, 18 months, but it was about 18 months. Okay, excellent. Um, uh, let's see, there's a question here. Before we use tools technologies, I think we have to know the data flow lifecycle PCI or HIPAA high tech and data inventory. I also think that PCI data uh, or HIPAA data should be segmented. Is that your opinion as well? Absolutely. I think uh, the start of any PCI project is that you must understand the data flows and, and the the points were processing, transmitting, and storage, and you have to map all of that out. Uh, uh, it has to be in a very detailed fashion. Uh, that's where we began with our analysis, and that took quite a bit of time for an organization that's 100 years old. Um, and definitely, if you can segment, um, I strongly recommend it. If you can go that route with network segmentation, I strongly recommend it. Um, from, from a standpoint of any, um, external compliance factors such as like HIPAA separating that out, definitely again. I would also recommend, um, you know, looking at things like uh, encryption services um, for, for data as well on the back end side. Okay, 
Excellent. Thank you so much, Tim, for your presentation today. It was uh, very enjoyable. We've learned a lot. Um, you can tell by the type of, of questions that people, you know, could probably buy you lots of coffee and pick your brain. <laughs> Um, you know, there was one last question in terms of how do you receive the CPE credit. Uh, my colleague Kate Carson will be sending out an email out to you next week with um, a link to where you can find the presentation as well as your uh, credit for CPE. Um, with that, um, thank you so much for your attendance today. Tim, thank you for being with us today and have a wonderful day, everyone.